Do you have any students in your class that might need oral administration of instructions? Or perhaps you have an ESOL student who needs a little bit of help understanding the content that you have provided for them. Well, let me show you this little uh, Chrome Web Store tool called Speak It. Now I'm at the website called chrome.google.com slash web store. If you see your toolbar, you could probably access it by going to apps in that web store, or probably the simplest thing is just type that in right in your search bar. So Speak It is an extension. And an extension, like you can see mine in the upper right-hand corner here, are tools that are always running on Google Chrome, basically in the background at all times. What's great about this is if I log into my school Google account on any other computer, such as one at school and one at home, these extensions and features that I've added on Google Chrome will follow me. Unfortunately, this will not work on an iPad. This is mainly geared for uh, your computer, your Dell venue, let's say. So I find Speak It, and we're going to easily add it by hitting the plus free button. And then you want to hit add. And you can now, now see that I have a little speaker up here and I can instantly start to pick. They have all these voice options that you want to choose. iSpeech is the first one by default. You could adjust the volume level, how fast you want it to go, and exactly which voice do you want it to have. So maybe I'll have a British female. You get the little speaker box to hear what it sounds like. This is a test text for Google Chrome extension called Speak It. All right. So that's basically going to take... Now, there are some pros and cons of each type of speech engine. So, for example, I'm on a website here. I'm going to highlight some text. I'm going to hit my little speaker box. Before computers existed, he invented a type of theoretical machine now called a Turing machine. So it's going to highlight something specifically on a Google Doc really good. Now, it will not do a PDF file that you have uploaded into Google Docs or Google Drive, it's going to appear as one image. The same thing unfortunately goes for a Word document that you've uploaded into there. So whenever you upload a Word document into Google Drive, make sure that your upload settings are always correct. So here I'm in my drive, I can go to settings right here, and I have the box that says convert uploaded files to Google Docs. That's the best way to make this compatible. So let's see what happens if I highlight a passage of my Google Doc here, of my agenda at the speaker box. Next meeting on the 19th, same as 26th. Parking lot for unanswered questions. Please type questions, comments, issues for the good of the group within this section so that they can be answered and or worked on by Friday. What we will do, what... So you notice, despite the fact that I highlighted it, it still read the entire document to me. I have down here a couple little things that I've been playing around with Speak It. it is there are a few options that you can play with. They have iSpeech, so you can highlight areas on a whole website and it's going to do it. Google Espanol and other languages are going to translate, um, I guess, pretty good for you. Speak It's only going to do a few words in the doc and then stop. So pretty much you're either going to get the whole passage of a Google document or specific parts of a website, depending on how you use it. If you want to change the different types of languages, you can right click on the speaker icon and go to options. And here you have your different voice options that you can do. So now if I go to speak it, um, it's just a different tool that I can use. I go back to my agenda, and I have speak. It's only going to do a few words on the Google Doc and then stop. So I didn't highlight anything. I hit that speaker. Next meeting on the 19th, same as 26th, parking lot for unanswered questions. So notice how it just stopped right then and there. So this would not be a good tool to use to have my students read the Google document. Instead, I would go back, tell them to switch it. So really... The, that's the one downside, is they just need to find the right voice engine to use with their need. So if you have any other questions, just contact me on uh, Google+, Plus, on Twitter. You can email me if you're on Outlook. You just type in Bo, and I am the one Bo in the district. So let me know if you have any other questions or suggestions or what issues may come across using this great tool.